My name is Vicki Bennett. I'm currently the Service Line Administrator for Banner Health, and I have the privilege of moderating your next session as well as introducing your speakers. Uh, next up is a subject matter of pediatric thoracic injuries. Dr. Kate Davenport will be our speaker. Um, just to let everyone know, if you received the brochure earlier on, Dr. Chuck Cox was scheduled, but he was unable to be here, and we're very grateful that Dr. Davenport has stepped in for us. She's currently the Associate Trauma Medical Director for Phoenix Children's Hospital, Assistant Professor of the Mayo Clinic School of Medicine. Her undergraduate was at Texas A&M, followed by med school at the University of Texas Health Science Center, general surgery residency at East Virginia Medical School, a research fellowship in research at the Innovation at Children's National Medical Center, and also a pediatric surgery fellowship at Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego. So please welcome Dr. Davenport. Thank you so much. Um, happy to be here today to talk about uh, something that we see all of the time that m maybe not everybody does. Um, pediatric thoracic injuries um, oftentimes have a lot of overlap, uh, similar mechanisms and similar findings to those that you see in adults. Um, it's certainly a significant problem. It, it constitutes about 10% of all pediatric trauma admissions and it certainly accounts for a significant component of morbidity and mortality in, in the trauma population that we see. Um, mostly it's blunt trauma as, a com as the common cause. Almost all of it is, is blunt in nature. And more than half of those that we see come with other injuries, significant abdominal component and often with head injury too. Um, as I mentioned, it's a significant contributor to the mortality, um, almost 15% of trauma-related deaths. And mortality increases when you have associated abdominal injuries up to 20% and um, even more so with associated head injuries. Pediatric uh, thoracic injuries have specific associated anatomy that's different in, in adults just due to their patient's size and their development. Uh, the chest wall doesn't fully develop until age 13, and so they have different chest wall compliance in the younger ages. And then under age 10, they have lower residual capacity, which certainly affects the mechanism in how their injury happens, both in the chest wall and then within the parenchyma of the lung, too. Uh, the first rib fractures, scapular fractures, and sternal fractures require much more force in order to break. And so if you find these on exam or find these in your workup, you have to suspect that there's been much more significant force in order to this happen, and you have to look for other injuries. And then children can maintain their blood pressure um, at a baseline with up to 40% blood loss. And so you have to be, have a, a real high acuity uh, for, uh, for watching what you look for when, with an otherwise, quote, stable patient. Uh, children have really flexible cartilaginous thoracic structures, um, and so when they undergo blunt trauma, they transmit this force through the chest, and so they don't necessarily have rib fractures like you would otherwise first see in adults, and they're really susceptible to pulmonary contusion, and this is often what we particularly are first see in most of our thoracic injuries in kids. The, it's, it's about the most common thing that we see, and it accounts for almost half of what we see in the chest injuries. It's an insidious onset of respiratory difficulty. It shows up as patchy consolidation on the initial chest x-ray, but it may not fully develop for up to four or five hours after the injury. Um, it worsens over the first for, uh, one to two days. It's distinguished apart from ARDS uh, by its timing, and the chest x-ray certainly lags behind its clinical situation. The treatment is um, similar to other uh, associated uh, pulmonary uh, injury, you need to clear the secretions, uh, mechanical ventilatory support may be necessary. You want to avoid fluid overload and positive pressure might be useful if there's a very large area of contusion. Pediatric pulmonary contusion differs from that in adults uh, in that it doesn't carry the same morbidity. Uh, even for someone in, uh, who has a greater than 20% contusion, invasive airway management is very rarely required. Rib fractures are much less common in younger patients than in adults. Um, as we mentioned before, the high transmission of force and there's a potential for severe injury, particularly first rib fractures. Uh, up to 80% of toddlers and infants with rib fractures are due to non-accidental trauma, and it's difficult to visualize this check, uh, these rib fractures on chest x-rays in young kids. Uh, as mentioned, it takes a whole lot of force to break ribs, and so if you do find them, you, you need to suspect that there are other injuries associated. They're very rarely isolated. 
Um, they present as pain on inspiration, pain on, on palpation, and they're frequently just diagnosed on physical exam. We do get a chest x-ray because, as I mentioned, they're associated with other, other injuries, and so if you do see rib fractures, you need to exclude intrathoracic injury as well. The treatment is uh, good pain control, aggressive incentive spirometry, supplemental oxygen as needed, and you very rarely need rib belts or adhesive tape. Um, our first rib fracture is associated with an increased incidence of thoracic vascular injury in kids after blunt trauma. A study was done uh, about a half decade ago at a single center, um, which covered about a 10 year period. 32 kids were included in less than one, I'm sorry, 30, less than 1% had a first rib fracture first rib fracture in a population of 32 children. The mean age was about 10 years old, and only one of these uh, children had a significant thoracic vascular injury. Um, of this algorithm or this chart here showing the results, what, what's important to note is that of the children who had a first rib fracture, the only one with the vascular injury also had an associated mediastinal abnormality. So no one with a rib fracture alone uh, had a vascular injury. The only one uh, also had a mediastinal abnormality. Uh, clavicle fractures um, uh, are common in children, but often not serious, and they are uh, common with blunt trauma in children. Uh, they're treated uh, often non-operatively, uh, very rarely require open reduction uh, by our orthopedic colleagues, and they're often treated with a sling uh, and aggressive pain control. Pneumothorax is very common in our pediatric trauma population. Uh, as you know, it's either lung, f uh, I'm sorry, air that's coming from the exter an external source or leakage from the lung surface. Uh, we treat them in the same way uh, that you do in adults. So if it's a large enough uh, pneumothorax, we treat it with a simple chest tube. If it's an occult pneumothorax, which is small or just picked up on CT, then we watch them uh, observantly. Um, tension pneumothorax is diagnosed and treated the same way. Uh, additionally, we treat are diagnosed by physical exam with deviation of the trachea away from the, the site of the injury with hemodynamic compromise. Um, hyperexpansion of the chest, absent breath sounds, um, treat with needle decompression of the chest, followed by a chest tube. Hemothorax is uh, something we, of course, also see in children. Blood can be um, hiding on a supine film. You can hide up to a liter of blood in the chest. Um, because of it being a low-pressure system, spontaneous hemostasis can occur, and with an early placement of chest tube, you can prevent clotting of the hemothorax. Um, thoracoscopy, uh, was uh, evaluated to, as a viable option uh, or alternative to thoracostomy uh, in a study, again, about half a decade ago. A prospective randomized control study was performed to determine whether VATS could be the first-line treatment in the hemothorax. A randomized control study of 60 patients was performed. Uh, half of these children underwent primary tube thoracostomy, and the other half underwent treatment by VATS. And the outcomes evaluated were hospital length of stay, uh, general success of treatment, morbidity, and mortality. The group undergoing chest tube treatment alone uh, were found to have a longer hospital length of stay and a higher morbidity. The group undergoing VATS uh, were found to have, quote, uh, better treatment of their hemothorax uh, compared to those with chest tube alone, and were uh, found to have an advantage of a direct diagnosis of the hemost and hemostasis by VATS. Uh, massive hemothorax can be found in children, of course, and uh, much like the diagnosis and the algorithm for determining immediate treatment in adults, um, we, we do this, but we do it with weight base, not by um, absolute volumes. Um, the, the numbers that we use are by 20 to 30 percent of a blood volume or ongoing loss of 2 to 3 milliliters per kg per hour and one should consider autotransfusion. Um, and at this point, we typically consider exploratory thoracostomy, or I'm sorry, thoracoscopy or thoracotomy. Tracheobronchial tree injury uh, is another, um, another type of injury that we see in children. It's not common, but it has significant mortality and morbidity uh, when it uh, when it is found, um, more commonly found uh, with a penetrating, mechanism rather than blunt, and you can see here that the location of the injury really varies, whether it is a blunt uh, or a penetrating source. Uh, the symptoms would be dyspnea, hemoptysis, sub-Q emphysema, pneumothorax, and decreased breath sounds. Um, as I mentioned, the location of the injury really varies based on the mechanism, and the diagnosis as well as sometimes the treatment can be by a rigid or flexible bronchoscopy. Uh, 
uh, this is just a, an image to show how the, the mechanism might be um, or might happen by blunt a compression of the airway between the sternum and the spine. It causes extreme pressure against the closed glottis and uh, can create some shearing against the right main stem. As I mentioned, uh, these are other signs of presentation, attention pneumothorax, sub-Q emphysema, mediastinal pleural air. An esophageal tear could also be found. Uh, this is uh, extremely rare. Um, and much like the rib fractures and other mechanisms requiring a lot of force, it, um, often found with co-injury. Um, more likely to be found in a cervical region rather than the other locations along the esophagus. Pain is located along the course of the esophagus and is exacerbated by swallowing or flexing the neck. Um, uh, Sub-Q emphysema or Hammond's crunch will be uh, noted. And treatment, uh, I'm sorry, diagnosis with an esophagram or endoscopy, treatment with antibiotics, either uh, medical or surgical intervention. Diaphragmatic rupture is very rare, um, most likely uh, through a blunt mechanism, and presents with uh, dyspnea, with um, filling of the chest, mass effect, abdominal pain, vomiting, diminished breath sounds on the side of the, side of the rupture, and comes with a one-third mortality. Uh, diagnosis by CT, uh, on the left-hand side, a 100% reported sensitivity, on the right side, a 70% sensitivity, um, and sometimes the diagnostic thoracoscopy is required for diagnosis. Uh, more common on the left side than the right side due to the protective nature or the masking of the liver. Uh, on the left side, the stomach can herniate into the chest and undergo volvulus, um, leading to dilation of the stomach. Uh, collapse the lung, shifting the mediastinum, and even potential perforation of the stomach if there's not an NG to decompress. Um, much like adults, ED thoracotomy has some limited indications, um, not likely to survive uh, in, the, in, in many cases. Um, some role for blunt trauma with loss of vital signs uh, in, in short short window um, with very limited reported survival with, for penetrating, um, acceptable for minimal uh, bits of PEA, but not likely, no, very minimal or zero reported survivors. In one retrospective review of pediatric patients, nine uh, patients uh, with blunt mechanism all died, one uh, penetrating and one survived. In summary, blunt trauma is most, the most common cause of pediatric thoracic injuries. More than half occur with uh, associated injuries, and they are a significant contributor to mortality, approximately 14% of trauma-related deaths in the pediatric population.